Hey guys, Modeling Weekly here. This week I'll be bringing you another one of my modeling guide videos focused on a topic that a lot of you have been asking for over the years, what tools to buy. Now when it comes to this subject matter, there's obviously a lot of straightforward suggestions that I could make that wouldn't really be news to anyone. These are the things like tweezers, craft knives, sanding sticks, maybe even an airbrush, and other tools that we often take for granted in this hobby. Instead, I'm going to focus this video on five tools that may not come to mind at first thought, however, have proven to be absolutely essential whenever I build a model. I hope you find this video useful. Kicking it off straight away with the first tool, we have the trusty mounted razor saw. This is essentially a normal standard tooth saw blade, except it's ultra thin at around 0.2mm and has extremely fine teeth. What this means in simple terms is that it can make extremely precise cuts in plastic with minimal force required, whilst importantly reducing the width of material that is lost to the width of the blade. These features allow it to have a multitude of uses when applied to the world of scale modelling. The most significant of these is its ability to re-scribe panel lines. For the majority of scales, the width of the blade will be perfectly suited to the width of the panel lines you intend to rescribe, so it makes the job of restoring missing details absolutely painless and effective. Now, you may be wondering what makes the razor saw so much better than standard scribing tools that you often see marketed to do exactly the same job. Well, there's quite a few advantages. For one, the length of the blade means that it's much easier to line up the cut with existing panel lines, creating a smooth transition overall. Additionally, scribing tools essentially consist of a large, single pointed blade that you drag through the surface of the plastic, creating both an unrealistic triangular shaped groove along with a jagged cut that could potentially go off course if the surface isn't a regular shape. These issues are negated by the razor saw, again by its length, but also by the fact that it consists of hundreds of tiny teeth, each doing a fraction of the work that the singular tooth scribing tool has to do. This means less pressure has to be put on the tool, allowing for a straight cut with much better accuracy and a lower chance of going off course. On top of rescribing, razor saws are of course useful when it comes to removing parts and components such as flaps and other moving parts on an aircraft to reposition them in different orientations of your liking. Overall, it's a crucial bit of kit. Second up in this list is the vernier caliper, a tool that makes use of a vernier gauge in order to make precise measurements on a small scale. At first glance, it may not seem massively useful in a modelling setting, however, it becomes invaluable once you stray into the realm of scratch building, along with creating spray masks for insignia. Whenever an exact dimension is required, the caliper can be used to measure it and transfer it exactly onto the material required. Examples of this include creating scratch-built cockpit components where size is a real limitation, along with control and rigging lines on some older aircraft, replacement wheels, spokes and structural components, push rods on engines, and a whole lot more. As I also mentioned, calipers are vital when it comes to recreating decals in the form of painting masks, so that essential decals on a model can be replaced with a brushed or sprayed on alternative. Not only does this make the model look more realistic, but it also allows for much more control over the colours and tones involved. Pair the caliper with a compass cutter and you have a duo of tools that could take on a multitude of different mask shape requirements. Overall, the vernier caliper is an essential bit of kit if you fancy straying into some more technical methods, improving your modelling game. The third tool that I'll be talking about in this video is the trusty old pin vise. Whilst this will be more familiar to a lot of you watching, I thought it'd be worth mentioning this little piece of kit as there will still be a lot of newer modellers who've not come across it yet. The pin vise is essentially a screwdriver style handle, sometimes featuring a pump action rotating assembly that can take a multitude of different micro drill bit sizes. What this tool allows for is the creation of super precise, small scale holes to be created in the model, serving a multitude of purposes, from the addition of hard points for munitions on wings, to the enhancement of engine and exhaust details, and much, much more. I personally use my pin vise on almost every model, as it's just such a flexible tool that can serve so many purposes. Along with creating a variety of different hole sizes, the humble pin vise can also serve some more technical modelling purposes. 
if you fasten two or three fine gauge wires into the chuck with the other ends wrapped around a cocktail stick, you can very easily create realistic tow cables or multi-core electrical cables to enhance the appearance of both aircraft and AFV models. On top of this, if you invert a drill bit and fasten it into the chuck as shown, you can combine this with a rubber and foil to create some very realistic bolt details for a multitude of different applications. Overall, the pin vise is again a super versatile little tool that I truly believe every modeler should own in some form. Now for the second to last tool on this list. For this spot, I've chosen the curved scalpel blade, specifically the number 10 blade from Swan Morton as shown in the video. Whilst this may seem a bit random to be featured, you'll be surprised how useful this thing is if you've been working with a flat blade up until now. What this blade allows you to do is to get into those tight corners that you wouldn't be able to access with a normal blade, along with concave features that really require curved edge to get into. Examples of this include the inside of engine cowlings, along the wing routes, aircraft seats, wheel wells, and a whole lot more. Being able to access these tight corners is essential if a seam line or ejector pin is present, which would otherwise be inaccessible and damage the realistic appearance of the model. The blade I'm using in this video also features a flat edge along the bottom, allowing it to combine the functionality of both types of blade, turning it into a super versatile tool that would be handy in anyone's toolkit. Along with the abilities that I've already mentioned, there is another technical use for the curved blade that is also worth pointing out for the more advanced modelers out there. Older aircraft that have been in service for a while will often suffer from stress marks in the surface of the fuselage that come in the form of shallow recesses that are only visible from some angles. The majority of manufacturers do not include these details in their kits, however. The curved scalpel blade can fix this problem. If you fancy a model with stressed skin, simply create the stressed patches by running the curved edge of the blade along the surface like a scraper, creating a very convincing effect. As I said, this is a much more technical aspect of the tool, however I believe that when you combine it with its other universal uses that I mentioned before, it makes the curved hobby blade a very useful tool to have in the collection. Now for the final tool in this list, and I think I've probably saved the best till last the super useful wet palette. Whilst it's not a tool in the usual sense, I believe it still deserves a place in this list of lesser known modeling tools that more people should know about. Even if you do the majority of your painting with an airbrush, this will still be undoubtedly useful to you when it comes to painting smaller details and other components that require a brushed finish. The wet palette is so brilliant because it's such an easy tool to make from scratch at home. All you need is a Tupperware, kitchen sponge and some parchment paper or baking paper if you're from the UK. Simply cut the sponge down to the size of the Tupperware, place it inside, add water so that the sponge is saturated with a small pool surrounding it and place the baking paper on top. You can then apply your paints directly onto the baking paper which is partially permeable to water so the paint will be thinned directly on the paper itself. The beauty of the wet palette is that not only does it thin the paint really easily, but it also allows for a colour to be mixed and then preserved for much longer than if it was simply on a normal palette, as it stays moist so long as there is a water supply present. You can also place a lid on the Tupperware for extra preservation. Once you're finished with the colours on the palette, simply replace the parchment paper and you're good to go again. It's truly an essential tool for any modeler. Well, that pretty much sums up this video. I know that it seems like a seemingly random assortment of tools, but I thought about this video for quite a long time and decided that these were the ones to go for, instead of the generic tools that you hear everyone talking about all the time. There are, of course, many more that I could have mentioned. However, these were the five that meant the most to me in my workflow. So if you have any more honorable mentions, please don't hesitate to put them down below in the comments. On that note, I'd just like to say a massive thanks to all of my amazing Modeling Weekly channel members. Your support is invaluable to the channel and I can't thank you all enough. If you'd like to find out more about what being a channel member entails, feel free to click the join button down below for more info about the membership levels starting from $1.99 a month. That's it from me today and I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye.